Hello, I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm and today we're going to show you how to build a polytunnel. These structures uh, are also called hoop houses, low tunnels, high tunnels and they've got lots of different names but they're all the same thing, a fabulous space for growing in. Our super exciting news is that we have a polytunnel. So her direct plants sent us a polytunnel to review and this video uh, shows you how we constructed it. ground posts need to go in so there's only about four to six inches sticking out of the ground. With this polytunnel kit the bolts are actually already in the fixing so you just use the allen key provided to do them up uh, which I hadn't realised uh, and I spent a goodly time <laughs> looking for the bolts until the penny dropped <laughs> that they were already in the fixings. So it was really easy uh, to tighten and loosen those and uh, make adjustments as we went along. Had more than a little help from our friend Tony who very kindly uh, leapt up and down the ladder and because he's put together a polytunnel before kind of knew what he was doing but the instructions were pretty clear uh, I read them through three times before we started so I would kind of know what we were doing need to get all the fixings on the right poles as you're building it uh, we decided to add crop bars uh, after we put in the main frame uh, which meant we had to take some of it apart again I will show you that a bit later on so if you want crop bars uh, it's a really good idea to put the fittings on uh, before you screw it all together There are four corner braces that need to go on um, and they go so that the support uh, is at the higher point at the end of the tunnel um, and not the other way around which is the way I did them when I wasn't thinking about it. But before the cover goes on it's very easy to adjust everything. As you may know our soil is particularly awful uh, so making a hole for the doorpost to go into uh, was hard going
this particular kit came with the timber uh, for a door at each end and we decided that we'd do a double door at one end and a single at the other so we used most of the timber uh, to create the double doors and I popped out and bought some more timber uh, to do the single door. Once the frame was up uh, and we could really see what it was going to be like, oh, I was so excited. I'm really pleased to have this extra uh, enclosed growing space. Uh, but then the hard work really began uh, and we needed to dig a trench about three inches away. So I used boards uh, up against the frame uh, to give me a straight edge. Uh, and the ducks were pretty good at coming in, helping out uh, and inspecting that we were doing everything correctly. trench needed to be about a spit deep, that's about a spade to depth uh, all the way around. I may have started it off uh, but certainly Mr J finished doing that, that was hard work in this ground. But once it was done, uh, it meant Tony could come back uh, and help us to get the cover over it.
I also chose to put a weed suppressing membrane all around the outside. Mr J and I held the cover at each end and pulled to create tension and we pulled outwards and downwards so that Tony could backfill the trench and secure the cover on one side. And then we went to the other side and again pulled really hard uh, down and out uh, to keep that tension uh, of the cover going uh, so we could get those sides buried. Then we created that tension uh, across the top of the door frame at one end and Tony battened the cover into place. And then we pleated the cover uh, around each side of the doorway and battened that into place. That was worth us spending a bit of time doing uh, so that we could make sure all the folds went downward so they wouldn't collect rain in them. and then it was time to cut out the doorway. Put the cover down into the trenches uh, and backfilled at each end. And then all I needed to do was fold the weed suppressing membrane uh, around the outside uh, into place and pin that down and get some wood chips on it. And today I've been um, sorting the doors, covering the doors at that end uh, and building the frame around the base and I'm just starting to make uh, the door for that end. Probably a bit silhouetted but uh, you'll get the idea. Uh, the top of the door uh, has got a green mesh on it, uh, the underneath has got poly and then I'm going to build a frame that sits inside uh, this top part uh, with the polythene on it uh, which I can fix in in the winter, take it out uh, for spring and summer and let there be some really good airflow uh, coming through. I'm so excited. Do you know what? I've even put door handles on. <laughs> uh, my woodworking skills are not great um, and 
there's a little bit of me that wishes I just could kind of visualize stuff without having to do the trial and error thing but I've done a trial and error step uh, across the bottom of these doors um, which I don't have a choice about because I should have leveled the ground out and I didn't uh, so there is a dip here um, which I'm now filling with wood chips uh, so there's a bit of a, a step uh, to go over once I've got all the wood chips here and just there uh, it won't be a problem at all And here we go, uh, one completed polytunnel, and I am so excited about it. Uh, it was a lot of work. Uh, would I do it again? Yes. So in a couple of weeks or so, uh, I'll do a review and we'll have a look uh, at how much I like it. And uh, Mr. J and I will also uh, do a video talking about some of the lessons that we learned uh, while putting up a polytunnel.